So even more direct and to the point, Mr. President, members of Congress and our staff will live by the same rules and get their health care from the same exchanges as other Americans. But the junior senator from Louisiana, I repeat, and a number of other misguided Republicans want to force members of Congress and their staffs to live by a different set of rules. Although Senator Vitter has happily allowed the federal government to pay for a portion of his health insurance for many, many years as a member of the House of Representatives and as a member of the Senate, now he wants to force these 16,000 congressional workers to cover the full cost of the health insurance. With this background, one must ask, is if, if Senator Vinner opposes the employer contribution for congressional staffers, does he oppose it also for the 150 million other Americans whose employers help pay their health insurance premiums? Does he want to discourage private employers from doing the right thing and providing their employees with affordable health insurance? Is that what he wants? Just to do away with insurance that 150 million Americans have in America? Millions, I repeat, millions and millions of employers rely on this important benefit to attract the best and brightest and hardest working people they can find. Ending the employer contribution would effectively slap 150 million Americans with a pay cut and a big pay cut. Is that Senator Vitter's intention? If Republican senators believe they should bear the full cost of their own health insurance, they can, without any change in the law, they can decline the federal government's employer contribution and pay their own way. They can even encourage their own staffs to do so. Why they would want to do that, I don't understand, but they could do that. But for Senator Vitter and his Republican allies to end the contribution for 16,000 hardworking federal employees, even after years of accepting the subsidy themselves, is hypocritical and mean-spirited. 